Dear friends, let me welcome you to another webinar dedicated to um, uh, some important subject of psychotherapy. Today I picked up a subject that um, I think is quite important for psychotherapeutic practice and uh, that is not very often mentioned. Um, and the subject that you hardly could find in the modern literature about psychotherapy. Before we go into details, I would uh, say a few words about myself. Uh, I'm a psychotherapist, I'm a medical doctor, psychiatrist, psychotherapist. I'm an international master trainer on uh, positive and transcultural psychotherapy, board member of the World Association of uh, Positive Psychotherapy. I'm in private practice for over 16 years and um, I love this profession. Uh, I travel around with different trainings uh, in different countries, mostly about psychotherapy and positive uh, psychotherapy particularly. So thank you for coming. I have uh, created a little presentation for you that we'd like to share and maybe you will have some questions that I will answer after the, um, after the webinar. Um, it will last about an hour, so please prepare a question and be patient. Uh, we'll be able to discuss it at the end of the webinar. Well, while I'm traveling in the, um, different countries, I try to see what is happening in the world of, of psychotherapy in different countries. What are the regulations? Um, how psychotherapy is presented in these cultures and countries? And, um, you know, what peculiarities are there? And it's, this subject is really interesting. I, I start with a little presentation. It takes a few seconds. All right. Well, as you know, psychotherapy works in the field of interpersonal relationship. And uh, as one important person or my, one of my favorite psychotherapists said, application of one person to another for help is one of the most valuable phenomena of the mankind. I totally agree with this and uh, the field we work in, uh, actually it's about this application for help. So the subject what psychotherapy is about really is interesting and interesting uh, for quite mature psychotherapists and young psychotherapists. There are a lot of questions behind. And if you ask people what psychotherapy is about, uh, you will find a wide range of different ideas about what psychotherapy is. This could be a medical idea, that this is about um, uh, medicine or pills or it's more about biological substances that affect mental health. The other would be ideas that this is something magic, uh, magic stuff, magic things, or magic manipulations. Or you also find ideas that psychotherapy is something about uh, shaman, you know, traditions, or some uh, ideas that work in more in the traditional cultural field or this is something to do with the brain, brain disease, brain functioning and so on or this is just a talks like our kitchen talks you know and um, easily could be repeated by any person who can carefully listen or you may find ideas this is about nurturing you know taking care of someone or just the manipulation about mind manipulation, manipulations uh, of somebody's brain uh, or, you know, um, it's quite dangerous and you should be very careful. And many, many other ideas. But indeed, what psychotherapy is about? What is this? So, one of the, another one of the famous uh, psychotherapists once said that psychotherapy is undefined method with unpredictable consequences. For this method, 
we recommend very strong education. Despite of irony, it has very little joke because really there is still no unique um, idea or no unique definition about what psychotherapy is. But generally, psychotherapy is a term referring to psychotherapeutic interaction or treatment contracted between a trained professional and a client, patient, family, couple or group. So this is an interaction. I think this is the, the basis for any kind of psychotherapy. The problems addressed are psychological in nature and of no specific kind or degree, but rather depend on, on the specialty of the practitioner. And this is very important aspect I'm gonna to talk today. Psychotherapy aims to increase the individual sense of his or her own well-being. Psychotherapists employ a range of techniques or interventions based on experiential relationship building, dialogue, communication, and behavior change that are designed to improve the mental health of the client or improve group relationships, such as, a, let's say, family. So again, it's more about communication. And it is interesting that if you look at the field where psychotherapy works, you could identify different professions. Psychotherapy may also be performed by practitioners with a number of different qualifications. I will mention some of them. This is psychiatry, clinical psychology, counseling, psychology, clinical or psychiatric uh, social work, mental health counseling, marriage and family therapy, rehabilitation counseling, school counseling. So it's play therapy, music therapy, art therapy, drama therapy, dance movement therapy, occupational therapy, psychiatric um, nursing, psychoanalysis of those from other psychotherapies. Well, we could add to this um, coaches, life coaches, or new professions where they um, also offer some help to people uh, who experience some, uh, some difficulties. So quite, quite a big range of specialists who can try to uh, work and deal in the field of psychotherapy. How is it regulated? It's an interesting question and uh, um, my experience shows that there is still uh, psychotherapy in the process of, uh, uh, of transition. No, we can say transition period. It may be re legally regulated, voluntarily regulated, or unregulated at all, depending on the jurisdiction of the country. Requirements of these professions vary, but often require graduate school and supervised clinical experience. Let's say in Europe, so I, could, I will talk about this a little bit later, um, increasingly being seen as an independent profession rather than being restricted uh, to being practiced only by psychologists or psychiatrists, as it is in some other countries. My practice mostly um, happens in, in Russia. Well, of course I have different clients in different countries, but uh, in Russia, uh, psychotherapy belongs to subspecialty of psychiatry. It means in order to become psychotherapist, you have to be psychiatrist. And psychiatrist is a medical doctor. So as on the slide, you can see that first you become a medical doctor, then you move to psychiatry, you specialize in psychiatry, and then you go to a special certified certification training and you become psychotherapist. Well, I cannot say is it a good model or bad, but this is how it is in, in, in Russia. But if you go to um, Europe, uh, it's still there is no unique or unified system of uh, psychotherapy, but you, you will see that um, psychotherapy more seen as an uh, independent profession. And um, after, if, after you get your, your diploma from the uh, field of medicine, psychology, pedagogy, social work, you go, in order to become psychotherapist, you go for another four, approximately four years of trainings 
in order to become psychotherapist. Um, so here, um, psychotherapy is more regulated by the ideas that, uh, that psychotherapy is independent profession. And if you look at uh, different regulations in some countries, you will, you will find out that um, it's mostly about money. Yeah, uh, let's say um, psychotherapy in, uh, let's say, Australia is not regulated by the uh, government. It's psychotherapy practice regulated by the organizations. So why is it about money? It's about uh, insurance covering and uh, uh, if you are a psychiatrist or psychologist, these two professions are well regulated and regulated by the government and uh, their work covered by insurance, it means the client going through the therapy may compensate expenses through uh, Medicare. Well, but in order to be expenses of the client to be covered by Medicare, you have to be psychi registered psychiatrist or psychologist. It's interesting that according to European standards, not of course not for all countries, but uh, your profession is not the main issue for, for uh, to be a psychotherapist. Let's say in Russia, psychotherapy practice is not covered uh, by an insurance company at all. It means all clients pay for themselves. And again, I cannot say is it good or bad, because there are good aspects of uh, insurance that uh, psychotherapy become more accessible. And the bad thing about this is that sometimes clients are more motivated to get help and get paid back. Let's say in Russia, people who come for therapy and stay in the therapy are quite motivated to go through all this loan process and they actually regulate, regulate themselves their um, uh, stay in the therapy. How long will it stay? Is it worth for them to continue the therapy? And I think this is a good aspect. Uh, we mostly deal, in private practice, of course, we mostly deal with um, quite motivated uh, uh, clients. So, let's say in Australia, again, psychotherapy is not regulated by the government, but it is regulated by uh, organization, let's say like PACFA or NZAP and so on. So, you may practice any kind of method, uh, but... Uh, your clients have to cover their expenses themselves. Okay. Well, the Strasbourg Declaration of 1990 talks about psychotherapy as independent scientific discipline, the practice of which represents an independent and free profession. This is the main statement. So, let's say I'm a psychotherapist with the world Certificate of Psychotherapy and European Certificate of Psychotherapy because I share this idea and the, my uh, education is accepted by these organizations. So the training in psychotherapy take place at an advanced, qualified and scientific level. The multiplicity of psychotherapeutic methods are assured and guaranteed. A full psychotherapeutic training covers theory, self-experience and practice under supervision adequate knowledge of various psychotherapeutic processes is acquired. Access to training is through various preliminary qualifications, particular human and social science. So, if you look at different practice, let's say you go to um, China or Australia where systems are quite, quite similar, you would find different range of uh, people who offer you uh, psychological help. It could be psychiatrist, it could be psychologist, it could be counselor, uh, or it could be coach. Um, so according to, uh, let's say, European idea, after you get your main uh, education, let's say medicine or psychology, 
you have to be trained in a different method. You should you choose this method, and you have to be trained another four years um, to be uh, a psychotherapist. And um, um, important aspect um, because the main tool of our practice is our own psychological health. This is the main tool of of our work because not the techniques, not the intervention really work and offer, offer help. Um, it, is more, it is more about building relationships that are healing. The relationships are the main factor of um, psychotherapeutic change. And as professionals, we have to be skilled and trained to build the psychotherapeutic healing relationship. This is why enthusiasm is not a substitute for competence. You can't just, you know, with full of enthusiasm, just go to your practice and stay there um, full of love to people and uh, just doing something that comes to your mind and uh, not taking any responsibility. Psychotherapy is a very specific practice. They may bring good or bad things to your client. You have to be very careful, skilled, and responsible for what you are doing. And here is the serious question comes. How do you choose the method where which you're gonna practice? The method that you are gonna specialize in, spend years of of, tra of training, a lot of energy and money. Few words more about Russian system. In Russia, in, um, you you train for about six years as a medical doctor. Then you go for a year or two for to specialize in the psychiatry, and then you go through a special course uh, to be a psychotherapist. So totally, it takes you about um, in order to become psychotherapist about. Um, eight years. Of course, after you graduate, you have to be specialized in some methods. And how to choose this method? This is the big question I'm going to talk about right now. With psychology, situation is a little bit different. In Russia, when you graduate psych uh, psychological faculty or university, you can immediately open your practice. It will not be it would not be called psychotherapeutic practice. It would be called counseling, psych psychological counseling. But basically, it's, it's the same. So it's not very fair system. And um, I think um, due to the fact that uh, psychotherapy practice totally based on your competence, you have to spend years and years practicing your own qualities, competences. Uh, improving your own mental health, going through self-discovery, your personal therapy, being able to establish relationship, being able to deal with your own conflicts and problems. So um, there are about 1,000 to 2,000 different modalities of psychotherapy, different methods. The average number is 700. You could find different numbers, but basically this is it. I think it's quite quite a big number. And when you choose the method, you can easily get lost. Like these street lights. How can you find you, your own way? Um, and this is the question about image of men. From my perspective, this is one of the main problem of modern psychotherapy. About 10 years ago, the question about image of men was called as question number one in modern psychotherapy. The existing therapies, existing um, concepts, going through the period that we can call a psycho boom, every year, uh, psychology, psychotherapy create new and new concepts. Well, you could see that some of these concepts 
are totally contradictory. Well, some of them would say that uh, man is good by nature. Some would say that man is uh, totally um, equivalent to an um, animal, or maybe mental health determined by the previous generations, or uh, it's determined by your conflicts, or your uh, worldview, or your spirituality, whatever. So you could see that the, these different concepts about what what is man, who is human being, actually define the, uh, the, all your actions toward your clients. This is why this concept of man is the qu question number one that uh, will influence your professional practice. One of the reasons um, we have different um, associations or organs, uh, administrative organs that regulate psychotherapeutic practice is this variety of different modalities. These modalities, they have very different um, um, scientific level, let's say. So, World Council recognizes about, um, recognizes about 16, I guess, methods that are um, acknowledged as um, scientific or historically proved or empirically proved. And um, I think this is a quite important aspect. So, when you choose the method, you can choose among recognized methods uh, or you can choose among non-recognized methods. But if the method is recognized, it means you will have less problem with problems with your clients' uh, expenses be covered by insurance companies. So the European Association of Psychotherapy recognizes the following modalities, like the energetic analysis, the synthesis, body therapy, positive psychotherapy, and so on. You could see on the slide, basically the same. So of course, you can choose any other methods. It's up to you because this is the question. Psychotherapy modality, it's like a religion. It's like a system where you look at your clients with specific eyes. This is why we call image of men as theoretical glasses. If you look at this, you would see that depending on their our view to a, a, a human being, they offer you different techniques, different intervention, different perspective to your interpretation of the problem of the client. And this is how they become very, very different. Um, how to choose this method? In Russia, we have a, a little story about um, a little boy who um, went to the forest for, to get some mushrooms and uh, walking around got lost. So he walked around back and forth and uh, couldn't find a way back. And uh, he was almost desperate. And um, finally he got an idea. What well, if I get a, climbed up uh, to the tall tree? So he climbed up to the tall tree and uh, he looked around and like, he could see a, far away, uh, he noticed the smoke from the house. So this is how he find a way uh, where to go. So what, what is the meaning of this metaphor? Choosing the method of psychotherapy, it's like choosing the tree you can climb up the most high. You cannot be professional in every method. Well, you can learn different techniques, that's right. But as I mentioned before, um, Choosing a method of psychotherapy, choosing the concept, it's like choosing the religion. Religion is not something we choose every day. It, you know, uh, in the modern psychotherapy, there are three main directions. One is um, behavioral. 
basically man is equal to uh, uh, animal. The second one is the um, um, psychodynamic method. The um, third one is humanistic. So all these three uh, psychotherapeutic religions give you different perspective, different view to a human being. Let's say if you're humanistic, you look at your client um, as a uh, per, being full of potential values, life goals, and so on. If you look from the behavioral perspective, you look at the behavior, there is no actually any psyche uh, functioning. The behavior is the only um, variable that you can uh, observe. So let's say you cannot treat your clients Today you're a behavioral therapist, tomorrow you're humanistic, because basically this is two opposite approaches. All right? So in this sense, we have to keep in mind that person never reacts to the reality. Person reacts to the, to the perception of this reality. And this perception is influenced by a belief system. And I think this is a very important thing. So what you believe totally determines the way you act, the way you treat, the way you perceive your clients. So the image of man is a theoretical glasses, theoretical lens. We determine what we would do to our client, how we perceive, how we look to our clients how we perceive their problem, how we interpret their problems, how we see their resources, how we see, how we see their limitations. Basically, image of man describes what person is now and what person is able to become. What is the potential? You know, psychotherapy is based on idea of change. If as a therapist, you do not believe that person is able to change. How are you going to deal with clients? And your belief that person is able to change also based on your belief system. It also determines the possibilities and limitations. What would you expect from your client? What you will not? What would we do to our client? What would we not? There are millions of different um, techniques or interventions that, of course, change the mental state or emotional condition. But it doesn't mean this is therapy. The therapy means that person is able to look to gain a new look to himself to look at the problem and get know him or herself, being able to risk and try a new uh, relationship, new behavior, new values, new ideas within safe and secure uh, therapeutic relationship. Famous scientist Carl Jaspers once mentioned, the distortion of image of man lead to distortion of man itself. Because the image of man that we consider as true becomes a factor of our life. It determines the character of our dealing with ourselves and other people, life direction, and the choice of tasks. So, if you perceive your client as distorted being, as um, someone who is not in nature or, or who is limited with some ideas, it will affect the way you deal with your clients. Let's say there are many methods that um, consider person as um, victim of problem of, of uh, previous generations 
you know, I'm, I'm the one who does not believe in such, such approach. But um, this is what, what happens. If you look around, you will find such a strange theories. And um, all these theories, they really give you a picture of what can you expect from your clients and what you should not. So let's say if today you're in the mood of psychoanalysis uh, and you, you put your client on a coach and you give uh, open questions and you uh, freely associate and uh, you put your client in the position of analyzing your dreams and so on. And tomorrow maybe you're not in that psychoanalytic mood and you try to give some behavioral trainings or cognitive analysis. You know, so you would not provide our good boundaries or good support or belief system to your client that helps your client to um, observe and identify own resources. And the level of techniques, of course, you can use very different, different tools. But in, the, in, the terms, in terms of belief system, you have to be clear what do you expect from your client. All right. Well, this subject, um, is, as I mentioned before, is not covered by the um, um, literature good enough. Quite seldom you will find any mention of um, notice on the subject. But if you look carefully, before you go to a different training, you choose the method, you have to be clear, do you believe to the concept that this method offers you? Because if you don't, you cannot be authentic, you cannot be, um, you cannot gain the positive regard to your client because you have no idea what to expect from this person. So this is why before you go to this specific training, you have to be clear what, uh, how do you look at your clients? Are you able to apply this concept of, or image of man to yourself? Would you like someone or professional to look at yourself through these theoretical uh, glasses, lenses? I think this is quite valuable um, um, criteria to identify the method that you uh, really like. Well, friends, basically this is, uh, this is it. This is what I wanted to tell you. And I hope very much that um, I could give you a little picture why positive image of man is important. And I hope if you have so many questions for the moment, I would, would love to, to answer. If not, I, I tell you a few words more and thank you. So, are there any questions you would like to offer? While you're thinking of questions, I would um, tell you, maybe you know that I'm working in the method of um, positive psychotherapy. So the concept of, uh, or image of man in positive psychotherapy is quite humanistic. We believe that man is good by nature and uh, possess of two basic capacities, uh, capacity to love and capacity to know. And this is the fundamental approach that helps us to identify the resources through which a client may evaluate, may develop uh, towards a better well-being and to be more autonomous, to be more uh, happy in life and um, be, to be a helper to himself and the environment, and the family. So this is how the image of man as a belief system helps us to identify these um, resources. It's not a question, are these resources there or not? 
of course they are there. Will we see it or not belongs to our ability to identify the system. But this is another question. This is how this is a question of how capable we are to identify these resources. All right, friends. Thank you very much for your uh, great interest, your patience. And um, I was happy to introduce you to this subject. And I hope to see you in my future uh, webinars, which will follow quite soon. And hope you, hope you will follow me on YouTube channel. Uh, where we upload some of uh, short videos, or you could follow me on the Facebook page or on Twitter. And uh, if you sign on um, for um, news, I'll, I'll show you on my website. So on this website, you could uh, cppRussia.ru. You will see a big button on the right side. Uh, with the word subscribe, and you will not miss any new ventures and projects, so please do that. Thank you again, and see you soon.